Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about zero-based budget. Uh, you hear it a lot, especially from Dave Ramsey followers. You hear it from some of the financial uh, people that's on social media, but it's preferably in the Dave Ramsey group that goes zero-based budget, meaning you tell your every single dollar, every single penny that you have in your income where to go. So how much money is allocated towards groceries, how much money is allocated towards utility bills and what have you. And then at the end, after you create a zero based budget, you should have zero remaining in the budget that you create before your money gets there. Um, a lot of people push back on it, don't understand it because they think that if I have a zero based budget, what happens in emergencies? Um, well, I'm not gonna say a lot of people push back on it. People that you know, just don't understand how budgeting works or just hate to be word all together. They push back on it because, you know, they figure they can figure it out without spending that 5, 10, 15 minutes a day. I mean, a paycheck to figure it out. So today, Alex, we're just going to talk about what's your ideal on a zero based budget? Do you do a zero based budget? And do you think it's effective in everyday lifestyle that you live and trying to live? Yeah, I think it's absolutely necessary. And um, it's funny that you say that there's people that don't do budgets that question what do they do in an emergency situation when they don't save money for emergencies to begin with. So if you're not saving now, what makes you think that, you know, you would save, you know, in, in a scenario where you're, you're pushed to save? So. Um, Alex, you know the answer to that. You yeah. know the answer to that. That's the credit saying. card, man. The credit <laughs> card. That's the emergency fund. But... <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. But I mean, even then, they're not paying their credit cards. Like, I mean, yeah, they because if we're just talking about just the budget, then like where their physical paycheck money is going, you know, if it's not if we're not considering this like a Dave Ramsey thing, if it's just going to be a zero based budget. Yeah, they could use credit. Right. Card. Like, they're not paying it. They might make minimum payment, but um, I I did I did do something similar to that. I didn't know it was called a zero base budget, but um, you know when I mean we still live by that pretty much, especially me. My wife's a little bit more free with uh, spending money, but um, for me, I mean it's just I know where I want my money to go because I look at money differently. I just see that money is used as a tool like it's just it's like extra tools to get to your next objective it, that's all i look at it as so some of it i'm trying to open up more because kirby forces me to to spend and you know whatever buy food go out get coffee um but really it's just the majority i would say 90 95 percent of my our money goes to a purpose it's not just spent freely so we have we understand what our bills are we understand how much that's going to cost we understand how much income we're going to get we talk about it in our household how much income we're going to get if it's if we're expecting more we talk about that and we know exactly where it's going to go so i think this is absolutely a good way to live and not look at it like you're in a financial jail cell but look at it like you're more in control of where your finances will lead your life basically right um i'm gonna push back on you a little bit on some of the things you said um one thing you just brought up financial prison uh for everybody that don't know he say that i'm you know forced him to go out and spend more money because he was in financial prison i'm like <laughs> alex oh. He was like, he was like, yeah, man, fifty cent ain't in my budget. I can't spend fifty cent for no coffee. No, I can't do that. I'm like, good lord, man. He was trying to. He, it, it, I, I get the concept of where he's where he's going with it, but Jesus, Jesus. It, I mean, it, his his budget was, and again, so so people understand. I know I'm just cracking jokes here, but so people understand zero based budget includes spending money. Zero based budget is not, hey, oh, find bills that I could just throw money at. And then I just sit here with the after my paycheck and I have nothing to spend. You'll be miserable. You'll be married to Alex. <laughs> that's what it'd be like if you don't account for spending money. And uh and that's and that's what I was trying to convey to Alex. I mean, it was like pulling teeth. I'm like, Alex, <laughs> I understand that you're 
you're a super saver. You can go 50 years without spending a dime. But for the most part, it, it makes it miserable when, I mean, because people still have wants. They still want to do things. No matter how frugal they are, they still want to do things. Uh, so that's the, that's the thing I said. You got to put space in there because, you know, you got to put space in there to forget him, forget Alex, you know, to allow, you know, his family, his wife to, you know, get out there and do something. Because, I mean, true. She does work. She worked hard doing a lot of things, you know. She's a serial hustler. So you still want to see fruits of the labor. Now, I'm not saying go YOLO. I'm not saying that. And, you know, that's not ever what I'm advocating. The only thing I'm saying is in that budget, you should have spending money. Now, if you have a, if you do it in a budget and then you just having the minimum payments on everything, lights, gas, phone, you, utilities, debt, and then at the end of that budget, there's no more money. The the problem, you, you shouldn't be trying to fit spending money in there. What you should be doing is looking for another source of income uh, to try to raise that income up or find ways to cut things that's in your budget. Maybe cut off some of those subscription services. You know, uh, maybe survey your life or do an inventory in your life and see what's some things that you really don't need to get to take off there to give you gap to allow spending money in there. Maybe, you know, if you save in, you know, $200 a month, you know, hopefully people got savings in their uh, zero-based budget. But if not, if you don't have savings and spending money in there, you got to find a way to uh, add add some income to your lifestyle or you need to find ways to cut. Again, I know you. everybody get tired of hearing, oh, you just got to live below your means, excuse me. But you can also add income to it. You can also add income to it. I mean, I ain't saying sit there and go get, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth job. I mean, if you want to, more power to you, but find something that, you know, something that you like to do that can generate money. Trust me, almost everything that you like to do can generate money some way, somehow. Uh, knitting, sewing, uh, tutoring, uh, proofreading work, you know, proofreading scripts. It's so much stuff on these online platforms to make money that can give you that extra money if you just need spending money. Uh, so that was the that was the thing that I wanted to point out when Alice was talking about financial uh, jail because living with him that's what it's like. Um, but on the other aspect of it, it's I found it harder, and people can agree or disagree with me. I found it harder. It was easier when you had little to no money to start budgeting because you already know you already know mentally in the inside you know it's hard. So. If you start budgeting, like, okay, I could just keep my head, you know, at water level and I could breathe a little bit. What I see a lot of people, you know, when they start getting up to bigger paying jobs, uh, you know, start getting to mid-level management and they thinking they got to live that lifestyle. And now you're trying to have them figure out their money to put it, you know, uh, to, you know, bring it in-house so they can keep eye on their money. They have so much things on the outside, you know, they think they have so many friends, they got so many engagements, they got to do so much stuff because they title represented. I think that's the level of people that give the most pushback. Uh, and I'm not gonna lie, it, when I first started, I was so broke. I, shoot, my, my budget, I ain't even had no money to even fill in the lines on my budget. That's how broke I was. So so for me, it was it was easy. And then it was just the, the matter of, of not, you know, going out there doing nothing crazy. I'll tell you guys, and honestly, when I first started, my spending money it was only fifty dollars, and it was like that for a long time. Not because I couldn't afford more; it was just because the jobs I was doing, the stuff that I was doing, didn't need, wasn't need to spend. Uh, but then later on, we know we made more money, and then we up the spending money. And then now the month, the spending money is up there enough where we don't even go through it for you know the whole month, just based off the income that we have. But it's a grind. It's a grind early, but once you start mastering money, the first budget is going to take you maybe an hour if you and your spouse or you and yourself just have honest conversations with you and trying to figure out what you can cut, what you can add, what you can do. The first one's going to take an hour, but after that, every month after that, it'll take 10, 15 minutes. 10, 15 minutes. If you can't give yourself 10 to 15 minutes in a day, sorry, I'm dragging on for a long time, but if you can't give yourself 10 to 15 minutes to become financially secure, then the problem is not your income. The problem is you. That's my view on it.
Yeah. And you made a good point with people that their income increases and then it's not that their bills just increase. It's that they, they feel that pressure from society to raise their lifestyle. Right. And so because right. of that, the result is their bills go up because they have a nicer car. Now they have a nicer house. They go on more vacations. They're wearing nicer clothes. And that's a very real thing with the majority of people and if you can right. have in mind that you just don't care what people think and that your money is just for you to better your life as you see fit and not what other people see fit then you'll be set but that's that's a trap that everybody falls into and last thing before we wrap it up people don't believe that we're sitting here in a bubble don't believe that we sit here and we don't understand the outside world the same pressures that everybody get to spend money we get those too we get the family members we get the friends oh you can spend it alex just said yeah kirby trying to get me to spend more money yeah you get the pressures the pressures do come you know you guys family member, oh man you can afford it it's always it's it's funny that pe the brokest people could tell you what to do with your money better than they can do with their money but the pressures are there i mean you know, people be like, hey, want, I mean, so people, random calls, hey, man, yeah, why don't you just fly for the weekend? Like, if I asked you to fly here to me this weekend, oh, man, you know, i got three months out. i got to find the cheapest flight to get there. But for me, oh, yeah, just fly this weekend and do this. So let's just go do this. Let's go take a cruise here. Let's go to Barbados and stuff like that. It happens all the time. So the pressure is there. It's the only difference between us and most people that deal with the pressures most people feel like they get uh suckered into it to do it and then the only thing we do is say no we're not doing that that's the big separation but we know the pressures are out there you get it from all elements you get it from your kids you get it from your friends you get it from your best friends you get it from your spouse you get it from you know your family members the whole thing but say no for a little while and you could say yes for a lot of while but if you don't start saying no and just want to take control then you're going to be sitting there finding the best budget plans got this plan six months seven months eight months out for the rest of your life but again if you say no for a little while you can always say yes for, for a long while if you just sit there and hunker down and focus on just you and your household structure with all that being said guys if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to share subscribe and we will see you guys in the next one